experiences have emerged a number of rather amusing stories, which I have spent about the last day and a half collecting, and am currently creating a song. At the moment, what I have is the chorus of the song and the stories, so I am going to present them in that manner. And this is my first composition, so let me know what you think. All right, so once many years ago, there was a night in the Kyrgyz tent where a two chucks woman was brought in and the Kyrgyz cared for her, fixed her up, did everything that was necessary, and then prepared to return her to her camp. And of course, we all know that two chucks take their personas very seriously. So the Kyrgyz are pulling up in the golf cart and they arrive and the two chucks point both at them. And I think the lesson to be had here is, don't shoot the medic, no never, it's not very wise. Don't shoot the medic, you might need him to halt your demise. Because, as we all know, battlefields are dangerous places. Um, and then another excellent story that I was told by um, someone from my barony, Master John, is the story of the time that he was arriving at Penzik, and of course it's dark and rainy because that's what happens in the mountains of Pennsylvania sometimes. And he comes up upon this gentleman who is attempting to erect his tent in the dark, in the rain, while very, very drunk. And this gentleman is attempting to insert a stake into the ground, and he's trying so hard until instead of hitting the ground, he hits his foot with the stake. And I have been told that that wasn't really the problem. What broke his foot wasn't the state going into it. It was when, being thoroughly anesthetized, he attempted to hammer the state out backwards from the other side. Oh! <laughs> so the lesson here is, don't stake your foot down. You know never, it's not very wise. Don't stake your foot down. It's not something that I would advise. <laughs> of the fighters, and sometimes the water bearers, and the people in full high Elizabethan garb, and Japanese kimonos, who forget that they're getting much more exercise and much more heat than they're accustomed to, and that in those situations it is important to drink water. So it seems that probably a good 50% of the people who arrived at this tent were there because of heat exhaustion. So. Don't pass out from heat stroke. No, never, it's not very wise. Don't pass out from heat stroke. Forgetting to drink is not wise. <laughs> Dale, hydrate. I also, I also heard an excellent story from a lady whose name escapes me. I did not, I was not able to catch it when she told me this. Um, so if anyone knows her, please let me know because I would like to add it to this. Um, this particular lady had a house that was a multi-piece construction that they put together every year. And for some reason, in this particular year, she was being helped to do the construction, and for reasons unknown, her bed was not usable. So she was forced to use the loft to sleep in. And of course, we all know that waking up in the middle of the night, your brain is not at quite full capacity, and that ladders are tall. <laughs> so. Don't fall down a ladder, no never, it's not very wise. Don't fall down the ladder, you'll awake looking up at the skies. <laughs> another one, this is another one of Master John's. This is the story of a gentleman who wanted to come to Penzik as a very authentic, genuine Celtic person. And in order to do this, he decided that it would be wise to wear a kilt in the Scottish style. And one night he was returning to his camp with his companions and having had a bit too much to drink, he was waddling back after them and fell behind. And as he's walking, he realizes that it's such a long way back to his tent and that patch of grass over there just looks so comfortable. Maybe this would be a good spot to rest my head for a while. So he laid down, fell asleep of course, and didn't wake up until a few hours into the day. Let's just say that his kilt was not providing full coverage 
during this time and during the course of the day it was quite sunny. Oh no. Oh, no. So the moral of the story is don't sleep in ditches. No never, it's not very wise. Don't sleep in ditches. Use your kill to protect all our eyes. <laughs> a second degree sunburn is a thing. Um, and the final one, this is my personal favorite, also one of Master John's. Um, this is the story of another gentleman who wanted to be a genuine Celtic persona. I'm seeing a pattern here. Mm. Who decided that a good way to do this was to paint himself in woe. And we're referring to the authentic woe here. Um, and as some of us may know, woe poisoning is a thing. Um, it's historically documented that Celts, while running into battle, would not seem to respond to injuries that most people would. Because woad, when it gets sweated off and drips into wounds, acts as an anesthetic, as an opioid. So in this particular situation, this gentleman was coming to woad, and his girlfriend thought that it would be stimulating to lick it off of him. Not realizing that as she is doing so, she is absorbing the woad, and it has also changed the permeability of his skin, because all of the oils are being washed off, and he was absorbing it as well. So they present to the tent having hallucinations, very anxious, and that was how Penzik got an entry in the New England Journal of Medicine for having the first documented case of wound poisoning in probably several centuries. <laughs> Ha ha ha!